It was an unbelievable win. We'd never expected that. I must say that the game has never been a game, um, but the way we performed and the discipline that all the players kept during the, the, during the whole game under very so difficult circumstances, um, that is phenomenal. And that is something that really gives hope for the future. Um, obviously, you've now qualified for the African Women's Championship. South Africa has, I would like to think, have always qualified for an African Women's Championship, but they've never reached that final stage. How does the preparation change now? What, what do you do now up to that big tournament? We will have um, a program that gives us the experience necessary to have a chance to get to that last stage. Um, we have three places qualifying for the World Cup, number one, two and three of AWC. That is our big, big, big aim because um, going to a World Cup means that women's football will be flying in South Africa. Absolutely. Obviously, the, the goal is the World Cup, but do we have what it takes to actually compete on the World Cup stage? We are still in process. We have another year and a half to be ready for the World Cup. But first, we need to be ready for AWC. So we had three hurdles to take. First, the qualification to AWC. Second hurdle is a little bit higher to qualify for the World Cup. And then we have the highest hurdle at the World Cup to perform over there. Um, so we take it into stages. Now our next stage is to gain experience. Then early August we go into a camp which is uh, a continuous camp up to AWC. And we have set opponents from the very strongest opponent to not so strong opponents so that we can prepare the different blocks towards um, AWC. Do you feel the country has now stood up and said, this is Banyana Banyana? They a much better team that we've been seeing and it's time to actually get behind them and support them. Women's football is not just a small sport any longer. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't, but it, we get the recognition now maybe. Because don't forget that Banyana Banyana has qualified for the Olympic Games before. Although it was also because of the draw that, that gave, gave the opportunity back then, but with the resources back then it was a fantastic achievement. Now the situation is, di is different because there's many more countries who have full-time programs in Africa. Um, there's many more countries who put everything into it to get to that higher stage. It's not only anymore uh, Nigeria and Equatorial Guinea and maybe a, a, a Cameroon who is doing that, but it's now many more countries. So it's, it's much more difficult to qualify. And uh, that, that brings in that we must go with it because otherwise you have no chance. Has this helped um, uh, boost confidence and motivation to the girls in the team? I feel, you have to ask them, but I feel that they're really up for it. We came back from the Comores at one o'clock at night. So we were in our beds around 1.45 by the time everything was organized. And uh, I had said to them, before you go into your club training, you must loosen up because you have to get the liquid of the, out of the legs um, of the travel. I came down at 7.20 in the morning to say goodbye to a few players who had to fly early and who would lose up later. There were already 14 players down in their track suit, um, in their training kit to go out to do loosen up. So they had gathered together and, and at 7.30 in the morning they were training outside after arriving in the middle of the night. And that shows that there's a spirit going on in their team that is something really special. We spoke to Portia and Janine just before you guys departed for the, or before the Ghana game, and they've spoken about a new um, way of playing football that you've brought to this team. What is that new way that you've brought? Um, you have to ask them because I don't know <laughs> what, what they did before. Um, my way of working is that I look at what qualities of players do we have in that squad and how can we get the best out of them and eliminate what we're not so good in. We're not a tall, strong team. We're, we say, tiny frogs. <laughs> and these tiny frogs need to perform at the international world stage. So what they have is a lot of creativity and, and a lot of power and a will to, to get there. So that is what we take out of it. And, if, and together with the players and the staff, we are creating a system now that benefits us and takes out what we're not so good at. So if we would play with long balls and fighting for the balls and getting the second balls, it would not help us because we're not big and strong. We are creative and mobile. So I'm trying to find the system that emphasized creativity and mobility. When we just met you, you spoke about uh, developing a big or, or workable defensive structure. Has that been put into place? Um, against Ghana, we could see that we are getting there. It's already much, much better than against Zimbabwe. Um, 
but it stays a weak point of this squad. So we have to we, we have to be aware that that is not our strength. Um, and the people who are saying that I'm putting in like a European style of football, that is not the case at all. I look at this squad and find the solutions for these players because we play completely different, maybe even the opposite of how I played with Holland and reaching the, uh, the bronze medal and the European Championships with them. As one of the most senior players, um, Janine van Beek took over from Amanda Dlamini as captain of Banyana Banyana. Now that you've come in, um, will you keep her in that position or are you looking at other, at other players? Janine is the captain in everything and um, there is no doubt that there will be another captain. She's respected by the players, she's respected by the staff, she's respected by the media, she's respected by the sponsors, she's respected by the fans and the fans not in the last place. Um, and the way she is um, uh, performing, the way she's in the group, the way she is um, communicating with us and with the players and with the media and with the fans, there's no other captain like her. What is your vision for South African women's football? Um, we have now all the female coaches in, the top female coaches from um, South Africa. We are in a three-day course, so again, it's massive the support that we get from Safa and Sasso to get that done. We are building these three-day structures that we need to develop. Um, that will go to the technical committee when it's worked out, that will go to uh, the executive committee and um, my vision is that we will build on the structures that are here but m making it sustainable for the future. We can just work on Banyana Banyana and getting them results on the short term basis. We do that. But next to that we have a second tier and that second tier is going building up the structures from the for the six years old up to Banyana Banyana. Um, building up the league structures in the regions and the provinces. Um, we are talking about setting in an inter-provincial league between the Sasso League and Banyana Banyana because at this moment there's 144 teams at the same level. So that is not good enough if you want sustainability in the future. It's fantastic for now because without the Sasso League no Banya Banyana Banyana. But we have to build further because the president has said we want to be world champion in 2019. Um, so we have to qualify for all the world championships with under 20, under 17, under 20 and the women um, to be able to get the experience to get there. Thank you very much for speaking to us and we wish you all the best. Thank you very much.